The explosion of Chrome OS over the past 18 to 20 months and at home working kind of similarly expanding unlike it ever has been before. It's kind of refreshing to know that you don't necessarily need to deal with a cheap underpowered Windows laptop or PC to get some actual work done. A case in point is the excellent Acer Chromebook Spin 713, the 2021 refresh to be precise. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be notified about all our future uploads. So this refresh over the late 2020 model provides some tweaks and tuning, but looks basically identical to the previous generation, making it hard to distinguish at first glance if this is new or not. Acer has simply decided to refresh the lineup with some slightly more power efficient and powerful internals and retain the design that has made the Spin 713 such a solid Chromebook. The bigger question though is whether the changes have been worthwhile, but we spent some time with the Chromebook to find out and this is our review of the Acer Chromebook Spin 713 2021 edition. The design and form factor is a key seller of this particular device because it's mainly made of aluminium and some plastic. This is a great for a workhorse everyday machine that can kind of take a day to day beating on an everyday basis. And it's deceptively thin too with that hinge for display, ensuring that when closed, the Acer Chromebook Spin 713 is completely flat, which is something that isn't necessarily true of all laptop form factors. Because the frame and the chassis are mainly plastic and aluminium, there is a tiny bit of flex to the body, but no real wobble that you kind of associate with dirt cheap Chromebooks and Chrome OS hardware in general. That's pretty important as the Acer Chromebook Spin 713 is effectively a convertible laptop hybrid thanks to that 360 degree hinge and any flex probably wouldn't give you confidence using it in either format. That's really a long winded way to say that the Acer Chromebook Spin 713 is a little bit plain. Plain is absolutely fine. It's functional, it's durable and it's inconspicuous. Something I think more laptops, especially of this ilk, could probably learn from. I'll talk more a little bit about that later on, but the most eye catching feature of the entire Spin 713 package is the frankly gorgeous 13.5 inch QHD plus display. It is in a three by two aspect ratio, which really is excellent when used in a tablet mode as you gain a little bit of extra width or vertical space. Things don't also necessarily feel cramped as they probably would on a 16 by nine screen, or at least that's how it feels when using this laptop compared to some others that do offer the feature. I'm not trying to oversell the display on this laptop though, because really it's sharp, it's precise. And although the color accuracy is not exactly perfect, it is excellent for everything I've used on a day to day basis. Sure, the screen itself is glossy and the fact that it's a touchscreen means you'll likely have to wipe a ton of fingerprints and grease away if you, like me, do like to tap and swipe the screen as well as use the trackpad and, and the physical keyboard kind of on the set at the same time. I would have liked though a few more ports to accompany the USB-C, dual USB-C ports, HDMI, USB-A, which is solitary, 3.5 millimeter headphone port and a micro SD card reader. Personally, I think an, a full sized SD card reader would have been nice along with just maybe one extra USB-A port, but I do think overall it is a fairly decent selection. There's even a volume rocker on the right side, which is there to help when using the Spin 713 in tablet mode. And there's a fingerprint scanner located just underneath the right side of the keyboard and only works when used in laptop mode. I will say though that I've found it fast and accurate and it has saved a lot of time re-entering passcodes or passwords and it does help get you logged in nice and quickly. Throughout my time though with the Acer Chromebook Spin 713, I have been using a model that is powered by the Intel 11th generation i3, the 111 5G4 to be precise, 8 gigabytes of RAM and it also includes a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD for storage. Now this is technically an entry level device, but at no point have I really felt that I've needed more power under the hood, save maybe a little bit of extra RAM, but very rarely as I use extensions like the Great Suspender, which does help ensure that excess RAM is not being hogged by my myriad of open tabs. Running a web browser and some fairly lightweight Android apps means you probably don't need that much to keep things running nice and smoothly and Chrome OS is really well optimized for that. And because of cloud gaming platforms like GeForce Now and Google Stadia, a device such as this, even without a dedicated GPU, 
You can have the ability to play titles like FIFA 22 at 1080p resolution and 60fps, and it feels incredible on what, in PC terms at least, in terms of the Windows side of things, is realistically modest hardware and without that dedicated GPU. It also utilizes Intel integrated UHD graphics, which is another reason why I've been so impressed with the performance levels here. I do though spend around 95% of my time when using a laptop or PC in Chrome or the Adobe Creative Suite. Everything else is more or less file management, and almost all of the software I need access to for work purposes lives within those pretty narrow margins. I think being able to sync all of my existing and favourite extensions and Chrome add-ons is great as I do feel less inhibited even though this is technically a Chromebook and isn't anywhere near as powerful as my home PC. The performance hit with even over 15 extensions live and active was also in no way noticeable here, which is something I had worried about going in ahead of time, knowing that it is running an i3 processor. Throughout my time with the Acer Chromebook Spin 713 though, I didn't encounter any slowdowns of note, even with what is a fairly modest Intel i3 CPU as I've mentioned. Overheating also didn't prove to be an issue, as the laptop ran almost ice cold 99% of the time, but the device fans would kick in every so often randomly for less than a second, which at first was jarring, but actually did genuinely become quite hilarious, as I can't imagine this actually made any difference to the internal temperatures. Maybe it's an erroneous issue or like a, a slight bug, but it happens so infrequently that it barely becomes an issue and it's something you just stop noticing. Anecdotally though, I did notice this happened more often when I had the keyboard backlighting enabled. I'm not entirely convinced by the keyboard itself, but it is adequate and there is plenty of travel in each key. I personally felt there was a very spongy feel, but they do work well and the backlighting for each key seems to be solid even if there is a little bit of light bleed in between the key gaps themselves. I similarly like the trackpad, but it did take a little while to get used to, to that kind of floaty cursor, which isn't, doesn't feel as precise as my usual MacBook trackpad that I do use quite regularly. That said, this is still a very nice experience once you learn how to handle the nuances with Chrome OS's way it handles cursor control. The glass texture of the actual trackpad itself is lovely to use, and with a little tuning in the settings menus, this is a really great option. Being able to also just swipe down your finger or interact with on-screen elements with the display itself, just like you would on a smartphone, is something I didn't think I would instantly love, but I genuinely think I might be struggle to go back to using a mouse and keyboard alone. Not only is it pinpoint, but it also lets you naturally interact with certain websites or UIs, or just grab and select things quickly without having to mess around with the touchpad or even plugging in a mouse. It helps that the touchscreen itself is really fast and accurate on top of that. I will say though, I absolutely detest the speaker here. Half the time, I just felt it. I had to reach for headphones just to enjoy watching any video content as the bottom positioning means things can be muffled very easily, be that by your lap or a desk itself. Then there's the integrated webcam. It's another sore point for this impressive hardware package. It's dim on although not grainy, will probably get you through conference calls with no massive issues but overall, it could have done with a little upgrade to a 1080p resolution, in my opinion. Now, there's a 56 watt hour cell that does come inside the Acer Chromebook Spin 713, and it has been exceptional in my experience. Part of that is likely due to that i3 CPU, but I expected that QHD Plus display to really sap at the internal cell, and I was shocked at how efficient the Spin 713 is day to day. I can get 8 to 10 hours of solid usage without thinking about needing to find a charge cable. And I opted to use a OnePlus 65 watt charger when I did need to charge this laptop overnight as the Inderbox USB-C charger is quite cumbersome. This is one of the major benefits as well of USB charging rather than having to use an awful proprietary connector like many Acer Windows laptops have tended to in the past. My charging habits have also therefore changed to mimic that on my smartphone, just top up a little here and there, or leave it in plugged in overnight, and I'm ready to go for the next day, such is the lifespan on offer here. So although not necessarily the most affordable Chromebook, the Acer Chromebook Spin 713 is an incredibly good two-in-one that would be ideal as an everyday workhorse for most people out there. The excellent QHD Plus touchscreen alone is probably worth the asking price, at least in my opinion, while there are more powerful machines available with extra capabilities that do make things a, a tough call, I think this is a great companion for those wanting a Chrome OS powered device with a little more than just one use case for instance. Updates are also guaranteed at least until 2029, by which time you might be looking to upgrade, but for now, 
I don't think I could recommend a Chrome OS laptop as highly as the Spin 713. Even though it's not cheap in the traditional sense, the i3 model is a great option if available in your market. And there is an i5 option if you do want a little bit more under the hood grunt. And you might want to up your budget, like I say, for that i5 model, but the performance benefits might be negligible for most people, especially if you're only really using the browser for browser-based software. We might not get a Pixel Book for 2021, but I think the Acer Chromebook 713 might be one of the perfect alternatives to another made by Google Chromebook. Hopefully though you enjoyed this, what is a relatively short review of a cracking Chromebook. And if you want to see more Chrome OS content just like this, then be sure to let us know down in the comments sections below. We really want to up our coverage of the lightweight browser-based OS in the coming months, but it's only worthwhile if you care to watch, read and share. As always though, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.